the title of my message is Seeing the World Through the Spirit of God. Seeing the World Through the Spirit of God. I want to go deeper. I want to go deeper. And I believe that this will be a message that will touch many lives for years to come. But before going on, I'm continued, continually being reminded by the Holy Spirit of this person. The Lord is healing someone with a growth on their spine. You are being healed. Growth on your spine, the glory of God. Just believe. Now put your hand on the, on the spot. It's painful in your spine. And the Lord is merciful. If you have other conditions, spinal conditions, just put your hand on the spine. I see the Lord healing. Also, I'm seeing someone with both hips are damaged. Both hips, both hips come under the power of God in Jesus' name. Come under the power of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. All right. So, seeing the world through the Spirit of God. Now, many, most, many Christians, they see the world just through what they hear, what they see with their eyes. But there is another realm. It is the realm of the kingdom of heaven where you understand, where you have wisdom about situations, you see things differently from everyone else, from most other people. You can see the world through the Holy Spirit. And to see the world through the Holy Spirit is to go deeper into the Word of God. It is to believe the Word and to interpret the world by the word. So this message, if you can get it in your heart, will change the way that you relate to people, that you see things, that you way you perceive things. In Proverbs 3, 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own understanding. You can turn me down. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Amen. So to see in the spirit of God is to trust in him, is not to be wise in your own eyes, not to rely on your own thinking, but to be totally dependent on the Lord. Thank you, Lord. So be a spirit, with a capital S, a spirit man, a spirit woman. A spirit man or a spirit woman, a spirit person is categorically different from other people. They may look the same, but they don't think the same. The Word of God is dominating their heart and mind. In fact, when the Word indwells the heart, takes control and dominates the heart, the spirit of the Word affects everything. Now think about it. Someone says something to you that's offensive and you feel angry. And that anger begins to create its own environment, its own atmosphere in your head and your heart. But when you hear the word of the Lord, the word creates an atmosphere. The spirit of the word. So, you know, we're listening to the testimony of Mirna, mother of a young man, 17-year-old, I think. You know, doctors gave no hope. She felt no hope. 
But the word of God is bringing hope. We see what other people do not see because we believe the word of God. By his stripes you were healed. By his stripes you were healed. And so the spirit of the word that indwells your heart affects the way you see, the way you think, the way you perceive other people. You know, you, you go to a doctor, psychiatrist, whoever, and they diagnose your problem. When you go to Jesus, he shows you your future in him. You know, Jesus doesn't say, well, you've got cancer, you've got blindness, you've got this. He says, be healed, be delivered. Jesus sees beyond your problem. You might be a gossiper. You might be full of anger. You might be a slanderer. But Jesus sees you, your future how you are a transformed person. You might be sexually addicted. You might live your life in jealousy. But Jesus sees beyond your sin to a life transformed, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. He sees his own character, the fruit of the Spirit in your life. If you're a spirit man, spirit woman, you can see what Jesus sees in other people and stop taking offense and stop reacting and become proactive in the spirit of love. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. I will never forget what that person said to me. I will never forget that employer who sacked me. I will never forget. I will never forgive. Resentment. That's a fleshly, carnal person. But those who live according to the Spirit, their thinking, their minds are set on the things of the Spirit. And what are the things of the Spirit but the Word of God? You know, if you want to be a spirit-filled person, you have to be a word-filled person. And I'm not talking about just memorizing scriptures, which is good. I'm talking about a revelation of the word of God. You know, being a spirit-filled person is more than goosebumps. It's more than speaking in tongues. It's about being in the realm of the Word of God, in the realm of the Holy Spirit. It is about living in another dimension. In Him I live and move and have my being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. See, the Word has its own atmosphere. The atmosphere of the word is life. It's peace. The atmosphere of a carnal-minded person is death. No real hope. You know, are you looking for an apartment? Are you looking for a house? Are you looking for a job? Well, the carnally-minded person looks at their different options and that's the only options they have. They look at the online, you know, sales listings or rental listings. And, but the spirit-minded person is listening to heaven. They're guided by heaven. There is life and peace in the atmosphere of heaven. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Praise God. So let's continue to talk about this life in the Spirit. 
Praise God, praise God, praise God. You know, you might have a friend who says, oh, did you know what Auntie Elsie said about you? Do you know what Uncle Bill is doing? Did you know? What are you listening to? You know, the spirit-minded person discerns the spirit in which people are talking. Come on. You know, when people accuse you and say all sorts of nasty things, did you know that the demonic behind them is sowing thoughts of accusation into you? And you can be judged by what they're saying or you can... Respond with the word of God. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Behold, all things have passed away. All things are new. I am a new creation. The old has passed away. Jesus Christ by his blood is my righteousness, my redemption. Hallelujah. I am clothed with light. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's read from 1 Corinthians 2.12. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world. What spirit are you drinking from? You, know, you sit and watch television, watch television, watch television, and you get up. And what spirit have you been drinking from? But the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but, did you hear that? Man's wisdom, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when you're in the Spirit of God, you begin to relate to people who are also in the Spirit, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And when you meet a fake Christian, a carnal Christian, or someone in the world, you're, there's no correspondence in the spiritual realm. You don't relate. You are a spirit person. Don't be ashamed of it. You have a different identity. An identity in Christ, an identity in the word of God. So, the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things. Did you hear that? He who is spiritual, filled with the Holy Spirit, the Word of God abides in the heart and the mind. That person judges all things. The word judge can mean a critical attitude towards other people, thinking you're better than other people. Or it can mean, a second meaning in the Bible, is to weigh up and make decisions. So God is a judge of all people. And he weighs your heart in his balance. A spiritual man, woman, judges all things. God wants you to so live in the realm of his Holy Spirit, so live in the realm of the Word of God, that you can weigh all things, that you can judge all things, that you have discernment of what's going on around you in your world and further afield. Listen to this. For he himself is rightly judged by no one. What does that mean? It means that you are so convinced of the blood of Jesus, of the righteousness of Christ, of the efficacy of the cross and what he's done for you, of your identity in him, that you're rightly judged by no man because God is your judge and he has judged you righteous through his blood. For who has known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct him? 
but we have the mind of Christ. And if you want to know how to have the mind of Christ, meditate on the Word of God. Believe the Word of God. Let the Spirit, the atmosphere, the Spirit of the Word fill your heart, your thoughts, your mind. Let it control you for the Word when it dominates is the Lordship of Christ in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we speak spiritual things with spiritual people. There's some people you just can't talk to, you can't get counsel from because they're not spiritual Christians. They're carnal Christians. They're fake Christians. Spirit, the Spirit speaks to the Spirit. Deep speaks unto deep. And some of you, you're, you're trying to draw water from shallow wells. You're trying to seek help from people who are shallow wells, who aren't spiritual people. They have no depth in Christ. So 1 Corinthians 3.1, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. Paul's saying, I couldn't relate to you as a spiritual people, as a spiritual church, because you are carnal, because you are living uh, according to what people say. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife and divisions among you, are you not, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For one says, I am a Paul, another says, I am a Paulus. Are you not carnal? So as long as you're saying, oh, this person said this about me, this person did this, aren't you being stupid? Aren't you being carnal? The spirit person has their mind, their head in heaven, seeing things from a divine perspective. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You begin to see that, you know, you just see how, wow, this person has this, this demon is, is dominating this person. This, what they're saying, I know it does not come from God. You know, you begin to discern according to the word of God. You stop taking sides and you begin to look to heaven. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we need to discern the spirit in which people talk. Instead of just reacting to them, if someone is full on angry, Shouting, what is the spirit that's dominating them? And, you know, some people are gossips. And I've often said in the past that the spirit of gossip is not only in the mouth, it's in the ear. You can enter into the spirit of gossip by enjoying listening to it. So, Luke 9.52 and it says, And as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for Jesus. But they, the Samaritans, did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem because the Samaritans and, and the Jews didn't see eye to eye. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to, to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? Now, there'd be some churches that would hold a church congregational meeting to discuss the theology of this. You hear what I'm saying? There'd be some Christians, you, you hear something and suddenly you're, you're debating, you know. But what did Jesus do? He turned and rebuked them and said, You do not know what manner of spirit you are of. Now, these were disciples. It just called them disciples of Jesus. And, you know, they, they walked and talked and, and ate with Jesus. And he says, you don't know what spirit you are of. You can be a believer and be speaking in a wrong spirit. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. 
Hallelujah. So look beyond people to see the spiritual realm that is controlling them. And then you can stop taking offence, stop reacting, stop talking about what they said and walk in love and forgiveness. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Your problem is not your spouse. Your problem is not your family member. Your problem is not your colleague. It's the demons that are affecting them. Discern. The spirit person discerns the spirits. There is another realm. Don't just react by what you hear and see. Do you know these spirits are controlling people and they want to provoke your flesh, they want to get you angry. They want to get you upset, you know. They want to steal your joy. They want you to get, get you into the carnal place. But we are not such. We know our identity in Christ. And we see people. We see their destiny in Christ. We see what God has for them. We see the goodness of God for them. Hallelujah. I want us to think uh, about Peter. I'm just finishing up. Now, um, in Mark 8.31, Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and after three days rise again. That's the reason why Jesus was born, to die on the cross. He spoke this word openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. All right. But when Jesus had turned around and looked at his disciples. Now think about that. When Satan speaks through someone, when demons speak through people, they try to infect everyone around. And Jesus looked at all his disciples and he said, he rebuked Peter saying, get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. I believe that when Jesus spoke and he looked at all his disciples, he cleansed them of the poison that Satan had spoken through Peter. You know, some of you, you go, in that situation, you'd go, well, Peter, you're right. We don't want Jesus to die. We don't want Jesus to suffer. Some of you, you know, you hear stuff, people say something, and, you know, and you're, you're on side with them, not knowing that demons are speaking through them. Some of you think about it, isn't it? Do you discern do you discern what's going on? In Acts 14, 2, it says, But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. You know, if you, what you listen to can poison your mind, can defile your mind. We need to listen to the word of God coming by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I mean, how many people have, have I met and they said, the doctor gave this diagnosis and they came and Jesus healed them. We don't accept the things that we see and hear because we're a spiritual people. We accept the word of God. Praise God. So be careful what you listen to. Paul says to Timothy, 2 Timothy 2.16, but shun profane and idle babblings, idle, idle words, for they will increase to more ungodliness and their message will spread like cancer. Then he says, and they overthrow the faith of some. Some things that you are listening to is disturbing, undermining and destroying your faith. It will lead you to resentment. It will lead you to 
carnal life. Turn to Jesus Christ. Well, we know that that many that many people are controlled by the demonic realm in what they say, what's coming out of their mouth. People can be offensive, but you know, God has given us a wonderful weapon, and it is the weapon of love and forgiveness. Walk in love and forgiveness. You will neutralize the enemy. And whatever was offensive will pass. Because you walked in love and forgiveness, you didn't create a bigger problem. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I say to you, love your enemies. This is Jesus speaking. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Anyone can react. But not everyone is a son of the Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God.